Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. I cannot believe we are, what, five days away from October, Ken? Uh, it's the year's flown by. It's been busy, busy over here. That is incredible. This is so wild. Um, I'm excited about today's conversation. We've had a lot of people asking us about these things lately. Um, you know, when we think about digital, I mean, there's so many opportunities out there. There's so many different ways to try and handle it. And, you know, we need to think about how we're really addressing these things, right? Whether you're in a large market, a small market, um, anything else like that, it, it, it happens across the board. And so Ken and I are both excited to help you guys understand how to ignite those digital conversations and develop new business opportunities as well. I know that's something a lot of people are very interested in, in particular. So uh, we'll go ahead and get it started. But first, uh, my name is Ben Bauslag. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Ed Sullivan. Joining me today is Ken Campbell. My background specifically spans the operational side of digital. I have worked for radio companies in the past, but uh, a lot with Ed Sullivan here and understanding how the back of house works, how the front of house works. And you know, I'm lucky enough, I know what's going on to boot to the ground. I know what's happening at the middle levels. I know what's happening at the leadership levels. And, you know, we love to have these open conversations with you guys to understand, you know, what's holding you back? What's preventing you from getting to the next space? You know, you, you maybe have grown your business to here. How do you get it to there? It's something that we're very good at. We're excited to talk to you about. And I wanted to have Ken join me today. Um, together we are Kenjamin. Uh, but Ken, give us a little bit about yourself and uh, what your background is. I appreciate that, Ben. Yeah, so guys, I, um, I, I'm a, a newspaper industry veteran, publishing industry um, worked for uh, a bunch of different media companies over the last uh, 30 plus years, spent most of my career 28 plus in and around the newspaper uh, business. My last uh, my last four or five years was really cool for me because, you know, this old newspaper dog had to reinvent himself and learn this digital space. So um, I brought digital marketing to to my group and really had to learn everything that's kind of, you know, what Ben introduced was his world. So uh, really learned that, uh, was successful with it. And um, really, really got to love it and, and realize that it is a great uh, uh, revenue source to really kind of shore up the foundation of, of, of uh, local media. And, um, and and like I said, I just I really kind of fell in love with it and, and just decided, hey, I, I think I need a larger mission. So now my mission, which has been my joy the last three years, is I run around the country trying to show other uh, publishers and media companies how to do it with their sales team. So I, I taught it. I, you know, I, I made my made, made the the revenue uh, machine uh, were for for the owner of my company for a few years, and now I'm trying to do it for hundreds of different companies. So uh, yeah, I'm 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 having the the time of my life. Excited to have you here today, Ken. Thanks a lot for joining me as well. Uh, and I actually made a slight mistake. The chat feature is disabled, but you can use the Q and A feature. We are monitoring it throughout. If you guys have any uh, questions, please feel free to use that. Um, we will answer them live, and then we'll also have a little Q&A at the end as well. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, we want to talk a little bit about our agenda today. We'll get we'll tee you guys up uh, just a little bit about Ed Sarn for those of you who don't know. Uh, we're also going to kick off the conversation from, you know, what does this digital conversation look like? We're going to set that table. We're going to talk about the different types of customers you might be working with. We're going to get into a CNA a little bit and what we can do to help ignite that uh, client needs analysis as well, how we need to educate our customers, be more consultative, and then you know, how we can present some fundamental solutions. So it's almost like the anatomy of your sales calls, but you know, not all these things happen within one conversation. So it looks like we have tons of people coming in from all over the country. This is awesome. So thank you all for joining us today. You know, uh, to get started, at Accelerant is a technology and digital advertising services company. We're focused on making the complexity of digital simple. And our mission is to make Madison Avenue level digital advertising accessible to main street businesses, the people in your communities, those business owners, and then also those consumers as well, right? So these are big things that Accelerant wants to do with you. And uh, we're based in Denver. We have a little over 200 people on the team today. We actually just made the Inc. Magazine's top 5,000 for the seventh 
year in a row. I cannot believe it. That is wild to me. We lucky, do have a proprietary lucky software. Number seven. Lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. Exactly. We do have our own proprietary tech solution that helps to simplify the entire digital sales lifecycle from where to train, build proposals, execute, manage, report, tying it all together within a single point of contact, a single user interface, everything. And we get to work with so many wonderful partners, you know, local media companies, agencies, local marketers, people like you sitting on the call today. But let's kick off the call. Let's let's think about what this digital conversation looks like. We do need to understand there are two types of digital buyers today. One of them, there's not many left, but they don't necessarily buy digital today. But that's maybe for folks who are in smaller markets, more rural areas, somewhere Ken's very familiar with in particular. But then you have other customers who are already buying digital from somebody else, the agency down the street even. And so we need to address those two a little bit differently. But what we're going to do is we're going to set the table first. We need to make sure that they understand. When I say they, we need to make sure that you as sellers understand where this opportunity is at. Because the same amount in marketing ad dollars, it's about the same amount, pretty close, is being spent every single year, but it's not necessarily staying in the same buckets. So where is it actually shifting to? We can see last year, total media ad spend by media for digital alone, about $278 billion, a little bit more than that. We can see it's actually grown in the digital space to about 302. You see all these other mediums, they're not necessarily dipping tremendously, but they're slowly going down a little bit. What, like I said, it's not about getting rid of those things. It's just slowly shifting. So we need to meet our customers where our customers are at. And if you're not out there pitching these digital pieces, you need to be because that's what they're looking for. It's the data that's showing this. I'm, don't take my word for it. Take the uh, the data for it. Ken, what yeah. do you think about this when you look at this? Yeah, no, it's it, it it is a good it's it's a great slide to start because you know when you, when you're talking to sales teams and you know this was this was a pivot that I had to make a few times, you know, as I was trying to move my you know t my my team my sales teams uh, into this space, you know, salespeople always have to operate from it from an area of of confidence, right? We got we got to have belief and confidence in the product that that we're that we're bringing to sell. Your manager can force you to go out and sell stuff, but unless you believe in your heart. That it's that it's a solution, you're not going to be terribly effective at it. But salespeople that that go out with belief, true belief that they're presenting a solution that's going to help their customer, you just you bring a a, a next level of enthusiasm, and that's how you close deals. So one of the things I had to realize is that I needed to talk to my salespeople uh, about this more. And 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 the reality is, you are bringing in digital a solution to them that is the fastest growing. Uh, a portion of the advertising uh, market. It is highly effective. It does come with a lot of uh, uh, back end and, and reporting and proof that it's working. That you know some of our traditional mediums may not uh, necessarily again doesn't doesn't de devalue them. There's still a role for them. But again, to me, this this conversation with salespeople is very very important. They have to feel confident in what they're they're pitching. This tells us right here, Ben, 2023 to 24. This space just continues to grow. This is where the dollars are going. So if you're going to serve the best interest of your customer, I don't care whether you're in Clemson, South Carolina, or in 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 New Orleans, that that business they've got to be in this space some way somehow to reach their customers' eyeballs. That's exactly right, and you're going to do a good job of telling us this in just a second. And we're already getting good questions right off the bat. Will these slides, will this recording be available to everybody afterwards? Yes, we're going to send out an email to you. It'll probably happen uh, by the end of the day today. If not, first thing tomorrow morning, well, you will get the slides as well as the recording for this. So if you guys want to repurpose this to talk with your own teams, use it to put in front of your customers, anything like that, absolutely. Turn it, turn it on while you're not at home to uh, entertain your dogs. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they'll get a kick out of us, I bet, right? <laughs> so Ken, let's talk about that first buyer. They're yeah. not buying digital today. You know, they're probably in smaller markets or they're a newer business, haven't quite dipped their toes in this digital space. You know, you dealt with this the most in the what last yeah. 10 years or so when you were getting this introduced into your markets. Um, yeah. Tell us about what does this conversation look like and why are these people so scared? You know, they're like yeah. Halloween year round, Ken walking up. Oh, that's not a mask. It's just scary Ken. 
Yeah. He's got digital cell. But how do we break it down so that they're not quite as scared? They're not putting, you know, they're not telling you to stay away. Yeah. So I, I think there's a few different ways you can do it. Now, now like I said, my, my background was largely in print. We did own some radio stations as well. So I kind of had to learn learn uh, that that conversation as well. But um, for, for me, you know, again, it's all about taking intimidation off off the table, right? If the salespeople, the salesperson thinks that they got to go in and just start yammering on about digital, man, that's that's not a great place to start the conversation, right? And they're not going to feel confident in that. They don't know the product necessarily as well as their core. So what we used to do is we used to present digital for really what it is. And, and I'll give you a little, little, little dog and pony. So I, I had print people. So what I would tell my sales reps to do, and this works so great in getting the customer talking, I would have them go in and, and thank them for their business. So if they were had the, the publication, I'd say, put it in your hands, right? Thank you for your ads in here. Really, really appreciate it. Talk about the publication. Talk about how, how long they've been with us and that great audience and those subscribers and they're all local yokels. And then say, but hey, I, I do want to talk to you about something else. What happens when they put this down at the end of that morning coffee, right? Where do they go? Well, they go, what's on their, they go <laughs> about their day and it's on this slide. So where are the eyeballs? The eyeballs shift to here while they're working, here while they're relaxing, here while they're researching or on their computer, here while they're doing a little shopping on, on TikTok. And all we wanna do is figure out a way to plug your business into that uh, audience. Really as simple as that. And that is kind of the jumping off point to get that customer interested in digital. No complex pitch, no big upfront education process. Just talk to people about where everybody knows the eyeballs are for good, bad, or ugly right here, y'all. Hey, Ken, what do you think when somebody says, oh, my market is so special. We're very different from everybody else. And they say that and it's like... In when, when, when we hear that, it's almost like them saying, we can't sell digital because we're so unique compared to every other market. What, what do you think when you hear that? Yeah, well, uh, Mike, I always follow that up with a question. So your market doesn't have people with phones and computers then? Okay, hmm, tell me more about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's they just a bizarre reality. If, 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 the, if the people have phones or computers in their hands, that they're, that that's not different. That's now, Your market may have its own little intricacies, but no. Yeah. So yeah, so really there's an opportunity out there for everybody, right? And I think um, some recent data, I think I saw some data from Burrell. I think over 80% of small businesses are buying digital today. Yep. So it's a huge portion of it. It could be even more now. Um, they know that this is where they need to be. And if they're not in there, be the ones to help guide them, hold their hands through it. You know, you need to be that educator, that confidant, that kind of marketing army for them. So when you do it, Ken... You show them this slide, you, you jump into it and, and give them the old uh, deep dive. Well, listen, Ben, I, I would love, <laughs> man, I've talked to people about this before. Like uh, sometimes you fail forward. Okay. Um, so when I first get into this space, um, by the way, I was an Accelerant customer, but um, Accelerant was not the first digital marketing company I did business with. I did business with a couple before to be, not to be named. Um I did it wrong for, frankly, for I think a couple of years. Now we found a way to the sale some way, somehow, just out of sheer gut and determination. But we largely did it wrong because of what you're seeing on screen here. We really thought initially we had to go in and be experts in in digital, and so I tried to get my salespeople to be able to go in right right away and talk about this stuff, and it just it just didn't work. It, it really it just didn't. Um, so we really shifted away from that, and, and that shift for me was you know, being introduced to Ed, Ed Celerin and just kind of how we do it different, break it down, make it conversational. So yeah, you got to avoid all of this. Um, you know, I call it digi babble. You, you can't get into digi babble with customers that don't know this stuff. You got to meet them where they are, where they are. And again, as we, as you kind of introed earlier, as we get into the CNA, you'll really kind of get a feel for how we help uh, teach the salespeople how to do that. Um, and again, not overwhelm uh, your customers. So yeah, you got to avoid all this. You, you dive in the deep end, you don't know how to swim, you will drown. Right. And this is like, I mean, this is basically when you're going in there, you're telling about all these little intricacies of digital, how it's working. Totally different than the way you guys have sold any of your other products. Because your reps have been amazing at doing two things up to this point. Selling ads, selling an audience, I should say. 
in placing ads in front of eyeballs or ears. Right. Right. You, when you go in there, you don't tell them how the printing press works. You don't tell them how the radio and TV works, how the airwaves go to the, the whatever that device is, and they get a radio ad through their ear. You don't tell them how the sausage is made, per se. We're making sure that their ad, their brand, their message is getting in front of the right audience, the right people at the right time, and they're able to connect with that business when they need to do that business. Bingo. Keep it simple. So, Ken, we're going to continue down this one, this, this little... Uh, you know, theme we have of keeping it simple, but we've got a tougher buyer in front of us, a tougher uh, advertiser. They're already yeah. buying digital and they're doing it a decent amount of it with somebody else or maybe a couple of other people. So what do we need to do to make it easier for them? Yeah. As you know, again, as I went on this journey uh, with my salespeople, um, we started to run as the years went by, I mean, you know, again, all those trend lines that you showed in the earlier slide, Ben, I really experienced this in real time. Massive steep growth, you know, starting especially, you know, five or six years ago in the digital space. So even in my small markets in South Carolina, Wyoming and Michigan, we started to run into advertisers who were investing sometimes with another competitor in the marketplace, sometimes on their own through Google or Meta or wherever. We started running into more and more customers that were that were actually buying and consuming uh, digital. That also became a intimidation factor for my teams, right? Well, how do I talk to somebody like that? That, that maybe they feel like that they're not on their level. So um, again, what we sort of learned over time was, okay, that's okay. Put your put your put your ego in your back pocket for a minute and do what you do as a salesperson. Have a conversation with somebody. They don't expect you to sit in front of them and understand and be a product expert and everything, everything digital. So have the same conversation that you'd have with them about what they care about. And that's their business. Yeah. Just talk to them about their business. Oh, you're buy already buying digital. Great. What are you buying? Have a conversation about it. And again, we'll kind of get down later. We've got some nugget questions that'll help you kind of pivot to, okay, well, you're buying digital over here. Here's why maybe uh, you, you can buy from us. We'll kind of get to that. But you, it, the, the foundation starts with, just getting, just just get them talking. Don't be intimidated about that conversation. Just get them rolling, get them talking about their business. Take good notes. Right, and you're asking them about like, how do they use digital today? How are they understanding their digital today? And then find out where those pain points are. And one great thing about Accelerant and working with us as a partner is putting it all within a single spot, a single location, a single reporting dashboard, a single story because there's going to be multiple moving points, right? M multiple moving parts. So this is a great way you guys can get in front of them. Let them know, hey, I'm here to make your life easier because I can take care of all of your marketing needs within a single point of contact rather than needing to work with these guys, those guys, the agency down the street too, and that guy too. So yeah. you have yeah. high quality products that you can put in front of them right now that gives them that much more time back in their day. Yeah, Ben, and, and, and by the way, this... You know, we, we all talk about the pre-COVID world and the post-COVID world, but this is a this is there's national data to back this up. Small to medium-sized businesses have gone from uh, uh, doing business with about ten different uh, media partners on average pre-COVID down to literally a handful, two or three post. So you know, these companies are looking for simplicity. I remember one of my aha experiences. I I, I went in to um, talk to a guy that ran a hair salon, <laughs> obviously not as a customer, but. Um, he was buying Google on his own. Uh, he was buying Facebook through an agency. He was doing uh, uh, MailChimp on his own. And he was buying third-party email through another, another uh, vendor. So this guy's literally not a gigantic business. But man, he's having to do, deal with four different companies to execute on his digital strategy. So yeah, if you can do business with a company like Accelerant that they can kind of put it all under one roof, one reporting dashboard, multiple products, man, people are all about that. They're all about making their lives simpler. So yeah, I actually saw that in real time. This is what people are looking for. Well, even that, like what that does is you're aligning your own goals with your customer because your customer wants ideally one, maybe two points of contact to run all their marketing pieces, right? And you, as the marketer for them, when you're running the back end, you don't want to manage three or four or five vendors either. Right. That means you're having to control, you have to manage all these vendors. You have to manage all these different reports. You have to tie it all together. 
And then you have to talk to five, four or five different vendors to get an answer on just each little part of the campaign. What's ideal is being able to tie it all together into a single spot. Yeah. And um, here's a quick teaser. We actually don't have a slide on this one, but at Sarnt is rolling out some AI executive summaries for your reports. I think we're going to have it available here before the end of October, maybe even sooner, but right around there. So if you guys are interested in learning more about those, please reach out to me or Ken if you are not a current Ad Summit partner or reach out to your current account managers and they can tell you a little bit more about it. But um, I actually just started seeing it and it is freaking sweet. Yep. So let's get back into this. We know what our types of buyers are. We know that we need to keep it simple and stupid. Some of us are pretty stupid right here. I got, fortunately me and Ken work with people a lot smarter than us. Uh, but Let's keep that CNA simple. Let's keep aligning our goals with what our customers' goals are as well. So, Ken, let's talk about what the CNA needs to look like, and you know how to just keep it simple. Yeah, I mean, I you know I think it kind of goes back to what we kind of previewed earlier, which is you know again what y'all are seeing on screen right here. Um, ask those open-ended questions, right? Don't don't present yourself as an expert. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned, you know, thirty plus years in the in the sales game. Um, if you act overconfident, over knowledgeable to somebody, people tend to push back away from that. Um, you know, be, be humble, <laughs> be humble, um, make it about them. So, you know, it, it's, it's all got to be about their business. That's how you're going to really uncover those opportunities and be able to present, you know, a good, uh, a good solution. So, um, and again, I, Ben, maybe you can talk to those bullet points on the right, just some of those little easy things you can use just to kind of get the conversation rolling and then zip it <laughs> and let them go. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things is just making sure that you shut up and not like interrupt them. Oh, yeah, I know about this. He does like this. No, just let them talk about it. Let them tell you where they're at in their own education process and their own journey of like understanding all these things because they're going to start giving you little tidbits that you're going to start to understand. And you'd be like, oh, there's a hook I can use here in a little bit. Write that note down. Oh, there's a second hook I can use. And oh, there's a third hook that I can use. But I wasn't speaking during any of those points. I didn't interrupt them. I just let them ride. Again, open-ended questions. Tell me about your marketing strategy. What's working? What's not? Who's your target audience? Yep. You know? What, what, what products are you trying to push? You know, where's your most profitable uh, service lines or product lines today? What does success mean to you? You know, I see you guys just open up another branch. What contributed to you having that kind of success? What does five years from now look like? How are you going to get there? Who else are you working with? So these are little tiny questions. They really are little that can help you get as much as you can possibly get out of them just to make it that much more valuable. And they're going to give you as much as possible. Obviously, like Ken says, you know, get them comfortable, be humble, don't be the, don't have an answer for everything. And oh, this is also a really important part. If they ask you a question and you don't have the right answer, you're not, you're not confident in the answer. It is okay to say, I'll get back to you on that. Amen. Uh, especially with digital, you don't want to misrepresent any expectations because the second we do that, you're going to create a disenchanting experience for them and they can leave a lot faster than you think. And once, and once you've done all that, Ben, next slide, we're getting to a nugget right here. This is a big one. And it's so simple. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're already buying from those folks, yep. right? This is that, that part two customer. And this is the majority of those customers that you're talking with. Ken, what's this little golden nugget? Man, it was such, it, it was such a nugget. Um, and, and, I, and I'd like to say it was just my, my genius. Um, but I, I really, I really stumbled into it about five years ago, but boy, oh boy, it turned out to be a powerful, powerful tool. So I was sitting in front of an advertiser and really kind of in shock because, uh, he had just turned me down on an ad campaign that, uh, myself and my rep were, were, were presenting and cause he had no money, right? Hey reps, y'all heard that one before. Oh, I don't have any budget left. Right. So we went back in because I thought I had a really, really cool digital solution once I learned, you know, uh, really where he was trying to grow the, the his business. So anyway, I went in and he starts talking about the $1,500 a month that he was pouring into Google on his own. 
and he's talking and I just did exactly what we said, y'all. I just let him talk and talk and talk all about it. And, and honestly, here's, this is, this is what's funny. And this is why I say you got to get this, how, he, how you get past intimidation guys. He's talking about it. And the whole time I'm listening, I'm thinking, well, he loves it. Like he, he can't, can't stop talking about it. Right. He's going on and on and on. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting this guy to move that money. When he got done talking, I just asked him this question. Huh? Well, do you, do you love it? That's all I asked. And you know what that prompted him to do? To tell me what parts of it he didn't love. And the next words out of his mouth got me to move, got him to move a thousand of that $1,500 to me. He said, no, not all of it. And to be honest with you, I really can't even read the reporting. I said, whoa, you're spending $1,500 a month and you don't even know how to read the reporting? Yeah, I don't have anybody to help me. And I said, well, when you do digital with us, you do get that help. Boom. That became like a mantra with my sales team. You mm -hmm. find somebody that's already buying digital, get them to talk about it, ask them if they love it. And I guarantee you, they don't love every piece of it. That's even with people who are, you know, say they run it themselves. Oh, I've got my niece or nephew, or I've got a person in house even that runs this stuff for me. Great. You mind if we take a look at it? Can we audit it for you? Let you know what we find and, you know, if if it's some nuggets that could be helpful for them, great. But you know, what if we could, uh, you know, do better? If we could prove that to you, would you would you move your business over to us? Amen. Right. And most time they're saying, you know what, I probably would because I can get that person the time they spend on running these things. I could probably get them to do something else that's a little bit more revenue focused, right? Or not not something that we love to talk about. But what if I can replace that resource with Something else. Where I, where can I put those dollars somewhere else? Yeah, so, and, and again, Ben, I think what you're what you're getting at here is like, you know, I mean, just just take that second bullet point extremely seriously, uh, salespeople. You, you've got to be flexible with with these conversations. Um, you know, on the right side of the slide here, you're, you know, we 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 do you know uh, teach and train on how to do a good uh, uh, needs analysis but you really do have to be flexible with it. You can't sit there and interview and think you have to ask every question. Um, customers will feel that. They'll feel like you're not really listening. You're just interviewing them so they can take the information back of their boss. You never want to come across that way. So flexibility really, really is key. Um, it, it is about, it is about listening. Um, but like I said, great, great, uh, great little nugget there. If you, if you, once you get to the end of that process, just ask the question, listen, and you, you're going to be really surprised, I think, at what that uncovers. Exactly. So when we think about how we're selling to these experienced digital buyers, you have to be consultative. You can't come in here product pushing. You might be able to you know, hook them for a conversation with, oh, we've got this really cool, sexy device ID product. We can target this granularly. You can see them walking into your business after we've delivered ads to them. We can do all that. But it might be a hook. But you need to make sure that they understand what your goals are and you understand exactly what their goals are. Yeah. Um, here's a big one, Ken, especially for organizations that are getting, you know, they're pretty new, still getting their feet wet within selling digital. Put a digital proposal together for every single customer that you work with. Right? Sales is a numbers game. I think we can leave it at that. Sales is a numbers game. The more digital pitch you pitch, the more digital you're going to close. Yeah, and I, you, and I, yeah, Ben, I was going to say again. I'll, I'll give you all some real world here, okay? Um, so, uh, and, and I'll go to this week. So, I'm still pretty pretty close with uh, the the uh, media company that I used to work for. I was actually talking to their sales uh, uh, manager over a, over a beer the other day, and just you know asking him how it was going, and he told me this story, and this is literally from like within the last seven days. He said, yeah, he said, it was really cool. He's like, one of my sales reps went in to call on a furniture store. And he said, just really, really good timing because he said a sales rep from, again, an unnamed media company uh, over in Greenville, South Carolina had come into our market and had come in to talk to this furniture store about digital. And what they presented was uh, a $2,500 a month digital package. And the customer, the, the furniture store said, I don't know. Man, I'm in Seneca, South Carolina. It's a little, 
that's a little above a little above my budget. I do like some of these solutions you're talking about. Can we do a little something less than that? And the answer, shockingly, was, well, no. This is this is our path. <laughs> so, so my buddy's uh, sales rep was able to come in the next week, present a device ID geofencing solution that was about a fifteen hundred dollar a month budget, customized, listened to where their competitors were and where they thought they could grab customers and got the deal. So, and don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing to create packages. Anytime we can create some efficiencies, you know, you can you can justify that with, uh, you know, the proper products and good numbers, but it's not for everybody. And you gotta be careful, just what's on, be careful with that. Make sure to, let your customers know you can provide a, a truly customized uh, experience. So that, that was a great one because that sales rep literally walked away from a $1,500 sale because the company didn't give them the flexibility to truly serve the customer's needs and budget. So if, if, that's, if that exists in Seneca, South Carolina, all my salespeople that are on this call, think about all the businesses in your market where those cookie cutter reps are walking in, banging on doors, and, and just and walking away from deals because they only have the package. No, give them a customized experience. It might, you know, that turnkey package might be a good starting point, but you always, we're going to need to adjust it from there, right? It's, hey, we've got packages that this is how you get started. But for you guys, I'd recommend we tweak this part, adjust that a little bit, and then make sure it fits into your budget the right way. That's exactly so that's right. That's a great way. And then the last piece here, convince them that you're the right digital partner. And I want to emphasize the word partner here. Uh, you know, this is really important because there's lots of different people out there who are just selling digital like it's a commodity. You need to be that consultant. You need to be that marketing expert. You need to be that partner for them. Your success does not come unless they're successful as well. That's where you're, how you're able to grow accounts. Uh, I have a story from just a couple of weeks ago. We had a uh, attorney in a smaller to medium sized market. He had started, I think, with maybe like a $2,500 budget. In 18 months, they grew him to $25,000 a month. Man. But he saw the success up front. And, you know, you spend money to make money. The more you put in, the more you should get out of it, right? But you have to be able to articulate that success. And then you have to get that feedback from them. What's not working? What is working? What's not working again? Because then we can adjust it from our side, right? So maintain that partnership status with them. Be somebody that they can lean into with anything, right? Um, I think that's a big piece of it. And that's how that seller likes to do it. So once you guys have that consultative approach, there's a couple of things to do to make sure that you provide the right proposals, the right fit for what that digital plan or strategy needs to look like. Obviously, learn um, applying what you learned during that CNA process. The biggest part matching the right solutions to meet your client goals. If they say, hey, I need form fills and phone calls, don't sit here and give them a targeted display option. You're not going to drive that. You need to set the right expectations there. They're going to quit after three months because they're not getting anything from your campaigns. Yeah. And then lastly, there is no silver bullet. There's a lot of people out there that are pushing products like they are silver bullets, and it's, it's setting incorrect expectations. The best proposals that you can offer are going to be multiple products. I think we actually have data. You can retain campaigns 50% uh, more if they have three or more products, digital products. So think about that. Hey, we can get an extra 200, 300 bucks a month in here, Mr. Client. I bet we can actually help you uh, even more in the long term. And I share things like that with our customers. You know, what do you think about that, Ken? Yeah, uh, you know what's what's interesting. You know, number two really resonates with me because you know <clears throat> when I was early in in my uh, you know digital journey, just knowledge level, trying to teach my teams how to present it, we absolutely did that wrong. <laughs> like we found the newest digital shiny object and was like, ooh, we we got to run around and preach the gospel of that to everybody. You know, and that's and that's exactly what you're talking about, right? That's that's presenting product, not a solution. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what we ended up doing is we ended up presenting the wrong product to the wrong customers. And, you know, and that starts to close the door on your credibility to be able to have uh, uh, follow up conversations. 
So mm -hmm. that's absolutely true. The only other thing I would supplement, uh, if there was a if there was a third one or maybe a a two A, um, and this was this was it. This took me guys two years to get through my thick skull. You have to go in and have the have the knowledge and and talk to them about the results and you can't be afraid of it okay it, listen the, the 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 superpower of local media is that it's personal they choose to turn on that radio station they choose to turn on your tv station they choose to pick up your pet your publication your newspaper your magazine they choose to go to your 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 your, your website and consume that content that's personal right that is the power the power of digital is that it is customizable and highly targeted. It's not necessarily personal, but it is highly targeted. So the power of that is that if it isn't necessarily working the way you think on month one, you get to pivot and change and move it. And the reporting, if you've got good reporting and you've got some and, a, and you've got a digital expert standing behind you that can help you unpack it, give you those two or three bullet points to be able to go in and say, okay, hey, look, we're moving forward. It's doing well. We think it can do better. Here are the two or three changes that we want. Man, customers absolutely freaking love that. They love it because they know that you're looking. They know that somebody's watching the switches. <laughs> and <laughs> so that, that and I, dude, I did not get that the first couple of years. I thought you just sell it and it's just going to rock. It doesn't work like that. So when we started learning how to do that, our retention rates went up. And, and again, it just gave my salespeople the confidence to go out and sell it because they knew it didn't have to be necessarily perfect month one. So that's probably my little two A in the middle of there, but it's absolutely powerful and true. I love that. No, it, it's absolutely right. And it's, it's kind of leads us perfectly into this next piece is like when you're choosing those right solutions, you need to make sure it fits correctly, right? Are we just trying to drive branding and awareness? Are we trying to reach people when they're in their interest or research phase? Do we know they're in consideration right now? Are they in high intent? Do we need to get in front of them right this second so that they convert with us rather than somebody else? And you know, are they ready to buy? And then how do we actually retain those customers to turn in or to uh, maximize that uh, customer lifetime value, right? So there are different things for every part of the funnel. You can't sit here and say device ID covers all this stuff. It's not going to. No, it it, it really doesn't work that way. And again, this is some of this. It, I, we're probably talking about you know maybe some of those customers that are you know a little higher level of digital knowledge. But uh, I, again, per, little personal anecdote. I remember going in and calling on a customer, and he was buying a lot of uh, Google uh, on his own. Right, he was uh, paying paying pay per click and search and all of this. So it's all that bottom of the funnel stuff that you're showing there on screen, Ben. And what he wanted, he was a brand, he wasn't a retailer. And what he wanted was form fills. Okay. When I went in and talked to him after I learned this, you know, once the old man got taught how this stuff really works, when I went in and talked to him, I was asking him how it was going again, that do you love it? Right. That do you love it vibe? And he's like, eh, you know, I'm putting a lot of money into it and I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of hits on the website. I'm just not getting the form fills. And what I explained to him was, understand, do you know why that's not happening? I showed him that, look, this is where I did a little bit more higher level education. I showed him this funnel with our collateral materials from Ed Salarant, and I showed him, hey, the reason you're not getting the form fills, would you give your name, address, cell phone number to a company that you just happen to see in a random uh, Google search or, or, or an ad at the top of a search result? No, but what if you had seen that business's name 500 times in your various travels around the internet over the last three months. Then when you caught them in a, in a Google search and you got driven to a form fill, then would you maybe feel comfortable that they're, cred they're a credible company and give your information over? The answer is yes. So this funnel is real. I like that. I, I have a real quick story to explain exactly how that one works. I moved to New Orleans four years ago. The one thing my wife forgot to tell me about before I moved here was that, oh yeah, we've got hurricanes down here. Fortunately, I've only had to deal with a few, but within the first month of us living here, we had a hurricane hit. I didn't know about it, and we had uh, roof damage. I had never dealt with any roofing companies. All I did was I went to Google, and I searched roofing companies near me, try to get as many quotes as I could as quickly as possible. But leading up to that point, I didn't need a roofer. I didn't need any home services. We had a house that was perfect. 
But I remember going to NOLA.com, I'd see Garcia roofing there. I remember going, I'd drive down the highway, I'd see Garcia roofing uh, billboard. I remember, um, you know, being on social media, I'd see Garcia roofing ads there. I was like, Man, I don't need them. You know, I'm, I'm not in the, the, the roof buying process right now. Hurricane smokes our house. I need a new roof. Guess who the first group I clicked on when I clicked roofers near me? Garcia Roofing. I had probably seen them a dozen or more times, maybe 20 times in the month leading up to the point when I actually needed it, right? So it's not like I need, want, or wish for it right now. But when I do, that's when we need to make sure that we've been building up brand trust with them. That's why we see that brand trust starts here when we start pushing, you know, more ads that we deliver to people, the more you're going to push them down the funnel. And then these lower funnel options are going to see, uh, or lower funnel platforms, their performance will see lift because you're driving more qualified people down that funnel. That's why. And that's, that, that, that example is so perfect to me because I know when, when that damage happened, you did like we all do. Google it, right? Roofing. Yep. Search results came up, but which one jumped out at your eyes? Garcia jumped out at your eyes because they had done a proper job and invested in all of that top of the funnel branding and awareness solutions on down. So when you hit, when you hit that point where it was time to buy, they had made the investment, they got the conversion, they got the sale. And the next time a hurricane blows through, hopefully not anytime soon, brother, uh, retention, they'll be the first company you call, right? Exactly. Speaking of hurricanes, let's pray that our friends in Florida are going to be okay. I know Atlanta's going to get it. Ken, you're going to get a little bit from where you're at too, but yeah, we're, yeah, we're, 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 we're in the path. So hope everybody's going to be okay with it. And let's talk about the next part of that process. So you've done your CNA, you know what you need to provide. You need to put that digital proposal in front of them. If you have not seen Ed Sauron's digital proposal builder, please make sure you let us know, reach out to us. Let's walk you through it. Show you exactly how it all works. You can dive into here, plug all of your uh, resources into here, and help get a proposal built. Then a PowerPoint will actually be generated for you, a customizable PowerPoint, something that shows you and your client that you know exactly what you're doing here. This is something you do very well and that you have built the credibility to put a specific plan in place for them. So this is a really, really cool thing. We actually just launched earlier this year, and uh, a lot of our customers are really excited about it too because it comes out as a PowerPoint for you guys. It's white labeled for you sp specifically, so it has your brand on it. So we want you guys to have fun with this. Um, again, if you have not seen these PowerPoint tools or some of our technology, please reach out to us. We want to make sure you can do that. Yeah, one one, one quick word on that, uh, Ben. The, 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 one, the one thing I will say about this, um, what I, what I, the, and, product team deserves huge credit. Um, again, being in, in this digital space for, for, for a bunch of years, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it be too simple and I've seen it be way too complex. And I think the team in, in the, in our design here has really struck a, a, a perfect balance. Um, it, it, it's not heavy on research. We don't go too crazy with it. Like that slide on screen there is absolutely perfect. Like when we introduce display advertising as part of the proposal, you can see it's literally a couple sentences a visual of like what people will ask you, like what is display advertising exactly? Well, it's it look these ads on your phone or right there on an app or on a website. Little, just a tiny little bit of teaser data that says, hey, you're in the right space. It's a good thing to buy. And then we just like dry, dive into presenting those numbers and your proposal and get you to deal quickly. Like I said, I've seen both sides of it. I've seen it be too simple. And then I've seen it like 40 slides and it's like trying to educate people everything about programmatic goes on for seven slides we don't do any of that so yeah the team's really done a good job with it our partners absolutely love it so yeah if you don't have a robust um uh, tool like this man you got to check it out it's, it's pretty daggum cool i agree i could not agree more well that's it folks we uh you know we'll open it up for another couple minutes to do a little q a if anybody has any questions you have um two subject matter experts here excited to answer anything we can in the, in the meantime but um we really appreciate everybody's time and joining us today again we will send out the deck and the recording afterwards make sure you also go and like at solerance and follow us on linkedin if you want to continue to get some major updates from us we have some awesome things that we're sharing there regularly and um we're just excited about this stuff so if you need help with anything especially when it comes to growing your digital business feel free to reach out to kenjamin